Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're checking out my favourite X470 motherboards. It's another top five video and the categories include the best entry level, a best value all-rounder, best of the best no compromises, a best micro ATX and best mini ITX. There's loads of motherboards to go over and we have multiple options from the likes of ASUS, ASRock, MSI and Gigabyte. So let's get into it, shall we? Today you won't have a hard time finding an AMD X370 motherboard for $100 US. There are numerous options available. X470 boards though, they are a little more pricey as the cheapest examples will set you back $130 to $140 US. And at that price, we do have a few options to choose from such as the MSI X470 Gaming Plus, MSI X470 Gaming Pro, and the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming. The MSI models are actually pretty much the exact same board. The Pro version just gets a fancy looking IO cover and well, that's about it. The board does look better, but in my opinion, not sure it's worth the uh, $10 premium. In any case, I would opt for the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming for a few reasons, uh, most notably which being that it is just a better equipped motherboard. The X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming includes a much better quality audio solution, higher quality networking, USB Type-C, more USB ports in total, and a better M.2 implementation. The VRM is similar on both the Gigabyte and MSI boards, so they pack a 4 plus 2 design with a doubler, and this provides plenty of power delivery for even an overclocked Ryzen 7 2700X. Overall, MSI and Gigabyte offer competitive products at these low price points, but for me, the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming is the best affordable X470 motherboard on the market right now. Okay, so you've got a shiny new Ryzen 5 2600X or perhaps a Ryzen 7 2700X processor in your sights and you want to give it the home it deserves. But you also want to keep the budget somewhat under control and this is where the best value all-rounder pick comes in. For $160 US, we've got the ASUS TUF X470 Gaming Plus, or is that Plus Gaming? I think it's Plus Gaming. And then we have the ASRock Fatality X470 Gaming K4 at $170 US, the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 5 at $180 US, and then the ASUS Prime X470 Pro at $185 US. Uh, pricing will no doubt move around a bit, so I'm not going to weigh too much of my decision here on the prices. Uh, they're just worth noting though. I have to admit, I'm not really a fan of the ASUS TUF X470 Plus Gaming. Uh, although it is the cheapest board here, I feel like the entry-level boards that we just looked at are actually better equipped. For example, the TUF model packs an inferior VRM, less features, and the features that it does include are of lesser quality. The ASRock Fatality X470 Gaming K4 is nice, but I feel for just a slight increase in price, the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 5 and ASUS Prime X470 Pro are much better boards. Picking between those two though, yeah, that's not going to be easy. Uh, I could easily justify going either way on that one, to be honest. As tough as that choice is, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the ASUS Prime X470 Pro. I really like the 6 Plus 2 VRM design featuring 6 real phases and a doubler, so that's really nice there. And the Realtek S1220A audio featuring Crystal Sound 3, that's going to be tough to beat, as is the higher quality Intel Gigabit networking. So while the ASUS Prime X470 Pro might be the most expensive of the bunch, it's also where I'd put my money. Right, so we're now well into Ryzen 7 2700X territory. And for those proud 8 core 16 thread owners, there are four good options to choose from. Though this time we do see ASRock challenging ASUS for the most expensive board. That said, there is a cheaper version of ASRock's X470 Tai Chi Ultimate known simply as the Tai Chi. And the only real difference is that that cheaper model does drop the 10 gigabit LAN support. So if that's not a feature that you really require, then it's probably worth saving the $70 and just going with the vanilla Tai Chi version. To date, I've had a heap of hands-on experience with the ASRock X470 Tai Chi Ultimate, Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7, and the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero Wi-Fi. They are all exceptionally good boards with no real faults to speak of, so, for me, picking between uh, these boards really is going to be another tough one. Uh, that said, in terms of value, the standard ASRock X470 Tai Chi board is hard to beat, 
and therefore most likely the best value Extreme X470 board. Although I honestly feel there is no wrong choice here from a value perspective, which this category isn't about, but if value was of concern at the high end, then the ASRock X470 Tai Chi and Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 do make a lot of sense. But I think once again, I'm gonna have to go with ASUS on this one. The ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero has won me over for a few reasons. Firstly, I really like the look of this board. It's a bit more serious while it still has some nice aggressive styling and that, well, just does it for me. In terms of features, it's also very well stocked. There's loads of USB ports, uh, plenty of USB 3.1 ports, and the rest of the features that are included are of the highest quality. One of my favorite aspects though is the BIOS. It's set up really well for overclockers and PC enthusiasts that like to fine tune their system. The included memory presets are amazing and it's great to find the stilt Samsung B-Die profiles included as well. These kind of extras really make all the difference in my opinion and for me, it's what made working with the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero a real pleasure. Okay, so this one's a bit of a trick category since there are actually no micro ATX X470 motherboards. Uh, not yet anyway. You'd think I would have come up with an additional category here, something with motherboards that actually exist, but yeah, I couldn't think of one. So yeah, let's use this opportunity to discuss AM4 micro ATX motherboards. Oddly, there aren't really any micro ATX X370 boards either. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. Gigabyte did offer a few models, and one of them does still appear to be on sale, and that's the AB350M DS3H, which despite the name does actually use the X370 chipset. So uh, that's very bizarre, quite a strange choice there by Gigabyte. They've justified this though by saying that the price of the board reflects that of a B350 board, and not an X370 board, and due to the layout, some X370 features aren't present. I have to say, I find both points a bit odd. Firstly, the fact that you could offer a micro ATX X370 board for $70, well, that's a good thing. Uh, why water that fact down by calling it a B350 board? Uh, then while I get having some features missing isn't particularly great, you can't exactly place two graphics cards in Crossfire on a mini ITX X370 board. And there are quite a few of those from ASRock, Biostar, ASUS, and even Gigabyte. Anyway, not quite sure what was going on there. It seems a bit strange to me, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, really all that does matter is that micro ATX X370 boards certainly were very rare, and there were no models from ASUS, ASRock, or MSI. Uh, there's a micro ATX Threadripper board, so you would expect to see some good X470 boards. Uh, there certainly are plenty of great cases that could take advantage of them, so I do hope that we see some nice micro ATX X470 motherboards. Of course, there will likely be a number of Micro ATX B450 boards uh, once that chipset's released, but I still would like to see some high-end X470 models. Anyway, no X470 Micro ATX motherboards to speak about at the moment. Hopefully we can revisit this category in a future video. Right, so so far there are just two Mini ITX X470 boards in existence, and well, they are both very good. From ASUS, we have the ROG Strix X470i Gaming, and from ASRock, the X470 Gaming ITX AC. Uh, Design-wise, they both have, I suppose, their strengths and weaknesses, though overall they are very good, and really the biggest difference is the price. The ASUS model costs $210 US, whereas the ASRock board is a little more wallet-friendly at $180 US. The advantage of the ASUS model is that it packs two M.2 slots, uh, one on the front side of the board and then one on the back side. So if you wanna use two high-speed NVMe drives, this board really is a must. The disadvantage though being that it has two M.2 slots. And this means that the front side of the board, the design there is just very crammed and placement of certain things just isn't great, such as the SATA ports. So yeah, having just the one port on the back side of the ASRock board has allowed them to make a bit of a, a bit cleaner with their design. Both boards do pack an impressive VRM, particularly for mini ITX motherboards, and both do include passive cooling on the VRM. Uh, the bundles are also very similar, including a nice Wi-Fi antenna, which also supports Bluetooth, of course, and you do get multiple SATA data cables in the package. I really like the look of the ASUS ROG Strix X470i Gaming, but 
unless you do require two M.2 slots, I feel like the ASRock X470 Gaming ITX AC is the better buy of the two. The only issue being that right now it is out of stock everywhere, or at least it appears to be, and it's not currently being sold in Australia. So for many of you, the ASUS model might be the only choice. For those of you watching this video in the future, well, I hope the future has been bright and availability of the ASRock X470 Gaming ITX AC is good. Should the board still be available for around $30 US less than the ASUS model, then that's what I suggest you purchase. Thankfully, there are already loads of great X470 motherboards to choose from, and I'm sure we'll see more in the not too distant future. Uh, currently, pricing does start at around $130 US, which isn't too bad, but I expect pricing to drop down if the X370 boards are anything to go from. Uh, but yeah, a lot of nice options from ASUS, ASRock, MSI, and Gigabyte. They've all done a great job with their boards. And as I said earlier, for the most part, you really can't go wrong. Anyway, I hope these picks have helped you guys out. And if you happen to agree or disagree with any of them, feel free to jump down in the jump down in the comment. Did I say jump? I think I said, I meant jump. Jump down in the comment section below. Let me have it or say, good job, Steve, if you agree with me. You guys know how to do comments. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one. So I'm your host, Steve, and I'll uh, catch you again next time.